Hey guys, today we're going to be drawing this underwater scene with a stingray living in it. I found some stingrays on Pinterest. Feel free to choose any you like. I got this deep frame from IKEA that's perfect for this project. We need to make sure to cover all the gaps in our base. You can use any base you want, like a canvas or something with low borders. I really like this because the drawing is sort of inside the frame. I sealed the gaps with a hot glue gun, both inside and on the back. I'll also paint the back later. I'm using epoxy resin from Resin Pro. You'll find the proportions and everything at the beginning of the video. I mixed two cups of resin for the ocean, added color pigment from Resin Pro, and then mixed clear resin with sand. I'll pour it into two parts without painting the base, though now that I think about it, painting the base might have made it more vibrant. So maybe try that yourself. Watch the whole video and see what you think. I'm starting by pouring sand on the base. Be ready for this to be a step-by-step, layer-by-layer process. It looks really cool with 3D elements like whales or turtles, but I opted for stingrays. Firstly, because they're flat and will look cool in the 3D space. And secondly, I feel like stingrays are kind of trendy at the moment. So we'll start with this first layer of sand, and you can also add some shells if you like. As I said, you can make the ocean part more vibrant with a pearly or metallic background. Now let's start detailing. First, we'll draw the body and head of the stingrays. I'm using some acrylic paint that I've shown earlier. I've got black, white, and a brown color for the base. We're going to make two stingrays, one deeper down and one closer to the surface. I'm not sure how the paragraph above should be divided as there aren't any visible numbered segments. However, I can provide a rough, more casual summary of the whole paragraph. You've got to mix it up with sizes and layers to add a sense of depth in your composition. Same same just doesn't cut it because your piece will be too flat. Also, work with epoxy resin, which doesn't sop up water like a sponge, plus it dries faster for swift layering. What you're drawing is like a chili rocket or maybe a lollipop with a simple flappy wrapper. Don't sweat over perfection though, just make sure your color application is dense. Highlight a sketched middle like a backbone of washed out gray white to reinforce the volume. And don't skip the tail fin detail either. Sure, you've seen stingrays beautifully rendered in black dots, but on a closer look, they're actually more complex. Once your first layer dries up, cover up with resin and get some snooze. Come morning, you'll be ready to paint the first little stingray. Its wings, or rather fins, are a combo of brown, black, and slightly white. You can stack up more layers here for a more 3D effect if you can stand the weight. However, if you're antsy like me, you can cut some corners. For instance, you can wait to coat with another resin layer after you've done the whole color application. Remember to color the edges of the fins. So we make the fins dark, but keep their middle part light. Don't cover it up. 
you know, the pattern we applied in the previous layer, we don't cover it up. We also add some light gray brown to the fins in the middle, that's important too. In general, make sure to alternate. Shadow, volume, highlights, always alternate, so your drawing looks more three-dimensional, more lively, and more vibrant. And now I take a clean, thin brush with a clean, thick white color to outline the edges. You know, like a dotted line, like stitching on a skirt. I also add some dots, but make them irregular, make them different sizes, like little peas or seeds. Then insert some black dots into the white dots, so it looks like a real stingrays pattern. It has a black and white pattern with some lines around it. Study it carefully and transfer this pattern to your drawing. Once the acrylic dries, I cover it with epoxy resin. You know, I prepare the resin while doing the drawing so it would gain viscosity and let air bubbles go out, and then I apply it. After the layer dries, I draw a larger stingray. And guys, I use a bit more acrylic than necessary, but you can save some paint by using just tiny dots. Because you need very little paint for the drawing, plus we dilute it with water a lot. We need a thick, rich color, and its consumption is minimal, so don't waste too much paint. Just apply tiny dots to the base, put some polyethylene wrap or food film over it, and your base will last longer. Look, I applied the black color and made the fins, slightly enlarged the bottom fins that go towards the tail. Gave it some time to dry, and then I detailed the fins with white. Now I'm doing the edging for the bottom fins, using the same thin brush I mentioned earlier, the one I bought at the nail supply store. The border should not be completely straight, it needs to be discontinuous, should feel like it's done with a trembling hand. Definitely outline the lower fin slightly higher along the body, and from there also make a border on all the fins, left and right. Study the pattern carefully, folks. Look, the dots are widest, biggest, and chunkiest towards the lower tail fins. As they head towards the head, they get smaller. Right now I'm outlining the stick-like patterns lightly with the thin brush. I'm making small, lightly visible dots that I won't fill with black dots. But the big white dots are going to be done later. They're a background for the black dots. You know, when we drew the first stingray, I didn't do this. But since this one is larger and will be the face, which means it's the most visible, you need to draw the stick-like forms and small dots first. Then pick up denser, more vibrant paint and create the big dots. Let the white dry a bit, then grab black paint and put black dots over the big white ones. Here's a piece of advice, guys. This technique gives the most natural effect to our stingray. Also, remember the body should be slightly lighter, and the middle part of the fins should also be a smidge lighter. You got to do this background, that's when it comes out beautiful. Also, you should make the bottom of the fins even brighter with white, sort of like frills. I'm also covering this layer. See here? You can do this layer with foam, the one I'll be using, or the one you're used to. You don't have to do this intermediate layer, but since my pebbles weren't completely sunken, and I'd like them to be more sunken, I did a transparent layer. But you guys can go ahead and in the droplet style method, which I'll show you now. After the layer has dried, I mix a medium viscosity resin, let it sit a little so it's like lukewarm tea, and I mix one part of the resin into a milky, not dense, but stained glass tone, keeping the second part clear, but a bit lesser. 
I will be doing a two-layer pouring, meaning the sandy slopes will be slightly underwater with sparkles and the remaining part will be clear. To create this transition, you can either use this droplet style method or like I said earlier, the classic style. But in that case, the resin needs to have gained some thickness. That is, it needs to be dense. It shouldn't be fluid or freshly mixed because then it would spread out. And then we create spots more like the more natural and closer to natural reflections they look if you make very close spots of different sizes. That is, right now I'm making spots far apart from each other and then I'll add more and make some wider. Going towards the left edge, I'll be creating really large spots, thinner towards the shore, but it seems more natural that way. So you choose what kind of sea you want to try to create. I just got a bit tired of the classic one, so I decided to go with this droplet method. When I was at the stage where I was using the droplet method, I realized that I should have made the background a bit more vivid, lighter, that is not so dark, but look at the result at the end. See if you like it. Well, basically the result is already visible as it is, but once it hardens, the droplets will spread out a bit and look different. You'll see and decide for yourself which you prefer better. It was important for the resin to gain some thickness so that these spots do not overlap each other and maintain their form. Also, it's very important that your table is level. As you see, I decided to pour a bit more right up to the horizon, add a small boat. I have a mold that I bought on AliExpress. I filled it with such a boat, inserted it and let it dry. Here's the final frame for you to compare with the result when it hardens because it will still move a bit. And I think if I overlay just a little turquoise, it will be freaking awesome. But should I leave it as it is?